Welcome everyone. My wife is pregnant, pretty big news. So I'm gonna go ahead and Ron Swanson things and build my own crib. So without delay, let's go ahead and get started. Right, so day one, step one. We've gotta lay out and plan this whole crib project just the right way or everything else doesn't matter. It's really important that you spend enough time getting a really good concept of the dimensions, the scale, and the details of how things fit together. If you don't do this right away, you run into problems later, and sometimes those problems are really difficult to fix. My problem with all the other cribs I've seen out there is that they look like prison cells. Uh, they're really pretty boring. They have straight up and down slots, and that's it. And I understand there are safety concerns, and obviously my primary concern here is not to kill my baby. That being said, I do also want to create something that is beautiful and excellent craftsmanship. The sizes work out where the ends of the crib, which is what I'm going to be spending most of my time on, can also serve as a head and footboard for a full-size bed. So that's exactly what we're going to do. We're just going to replace the side rails with longer ones, and that'll allow us to use it as a full-size bed when we get to that point, assuming that we don't kill our baby before then. So those who know me know I don't really like artists and art. I think it's subjective, and I think if you were better, you wouldn't be an artist, you'd be a craftsman. I like to think of myself as a craftsman because I'm skilled. I saw this like terrible art show where this guy uh, soldered LEDs on top of the solar panels that were powering them, and it was just terrible design, sloppy work. Um, and that's everything that I hate about artists. So when I'm thinking about the design of this crib, I want it to be informed by real and precise things. I want it to represent science and mathematics and use those principles to be beautiful. So I'm hoping to lay this out in a way that reflects the golden ratio, and mimics a leaf in the viewer's mind so that it's both natural and mathematical. In my mind, that's the most beautiful design. I'm gonna start by marking out the size of the mattress because that's the core that the whole thing has to be built around. From there, I'm going to start making my golden rectangle and mapping things out, actually looking at the dimensions and sizes and seeing what things actually look like on scale Another reason why I'm using this board to map everything out is because I'm planning to steam bend the boards on the crib and this board will serve a solid surface. I can screw my guides onto this board and then steam bend the pieces on this board, especially if I already have my marks laid out. So that's the plan. I just gotta put it in practice. If you're using a framing square and laying something out on a sheet of plywood, always use a factory edge like this edge right here. Those edges are pretty much guaranteed to be straight and good working edges. The interesting thing about the golden ratio is that it's an irrational number. So it's best to figure this out not on a calculator, but on a board like this. So I have a 36 inch square right here. And you always start with a square. You take half the width of that square. So that's 18. That's the halfway point, exactly. Gonna stick a nail in that. Now, tie a string to that. All right, so this string goes all the way from the center of that edge to this far corner. And this 
will give me my golden ratio. Like so many other things, it's based on circles. Math is a fascinating and beautiful thing. So, from here, gonna take it, something like that. That right there, beautiful. So now I have my mark right here, which is the end of my crib. Big square right here, small rectangle right here. We've got our golden ratio and we can repeat that process as many times as we would like. And I think we would like to repeat it a couple more times. Right? So now we've just created a square and a smaller rectangle. And we can do that with this smaller rectangle as well. So I'm now going to prep this 2x6. I'm going to bend the wood around. Uh, this 2x6 is going to screw on to the sheet of plywood. And then I'm going to bend the slats around. So I want a nice sweeping bend here. And I think that this paint can is about the right diameter here, so. So we've got our circle on here. We'll just cut that out with the bandsaw. So we can kind of see what's happening with our pattern. I'm going to try and steam this in a bag. The YouTube video I saw on this used actual plastic tubing, but I couldn't find that anywhere in rolls that were like less than a thousand feet. So I'm just going to wrap this four mil plastic sheathing around it. I'm just going to fold this over a couple times. Staple it. Alright, we've got it wrapped in plastic. Now we just got to put some steam in it. I hear that drywall steamers actually work for this. Hopefully it'll be enough power and enough steam. We won't be needing that. Or that. First team bending and failure, complete failure. First team bending attempt did not go well at all. You can see it here, nice big crack in it. So not exactly what we were going for. I've learned that if you're doing something you've never done before, success is usually a string of failures followed by a series of revisions. So, this is one failure. Hopefully there aren't too many more failures because this wood is quite expensive. At any rate, I spent last night doing a little bit more in-depth research 
and I have discovered several troubling things. The first troubling thing is that maple, which is what this is, does not bend very easily and does not bend in a very tight radius. So that alone is probably part of my problem. That's not a huge issue. I can switch to another type of wood. Second problem, really dry wood or kiln dried wood will not ever bend ever. And I don't know if this has been kiln dried or how dry it is, but I suspect it's pretty dry, which is normally a good thing, but it will completely prevent it from bending. So if that's the case, nothing I do will bend it successfully. <clears throat> the third thing I learned, and this is actually something I can do something about, is that when you bend it, it has to be under compression or it's what's out right here. So basically what that means is you've got to grab both ends and you've got to squeeze the hell out of it because this long side on the bend can't elongate. If it elongates more than about half a percent, which is not much at all, it'll break. So you've got to hold the long side and you've got to compress the short side, squeeze it together. So you've got to have something holding it and compressing it together so that this outside of the bend doesn't stretch because if it stretches, it breaks like this. So that's something I actually can do something about. Oh, fourth thing, the grain. Uh, you need fairly straight grain and you need at least 15 inches on your bend where the grain is running straight and it's not running out of the board. If it runs out of the board before a 15 inch section, it's probably not going to bend. So that's also something I can do something about. I'm going to look at the boards a little bit more closely and find straight grain sections to try and bend. Although to be honest, this is pretty straight grained. Yep. All right, that's the plan. All right, guys, thanks for watching. I'm gonna keep at this, keep making those changes I mentioned before. And in my next episode, hopefully, I'll have some successfully steam bent wood. I'll be able to walk you through that whole process. It'll be, uh, it'll be awesome. I really hope that I am able to find wood and a method to successfully steam bend it. I am making some pretty aggressive bends but I like the design and I don't want to make just kind of a boring jail cell type crib. Um, if I'm gonna do that, I might as well just buy it from Ikea. So anyway, if you have thoughts, comments, questions, I'd love to hear from you. Thanks again.